Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from whatever you are watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, President Ruto was on an interview yesterday, and uh, there is some remark that he made in that interview. He was clear that he's going to have a four days retreat with his cabinet so that he can have time with them, explain to them their specific roles in their ministries so that everyone will know what role he need to play when and how. And this is coming at a time when we have had William Ruto, cabinet secretaries, coming up with a statement that are contradicting. To some extent, you find that president is issuing a different statement, but ministers in their department, they are issuing statements that are contrary. They come up uh, with a statement which has not even been proved through the cabinet. Some issues that need to go through even National Assembly before they talk about them. So someone just come with their suggestions. That means most of them, they actually don't understand their role and how work is done in specific ministries. Now, today, lawyer Martin Olo was at Spice FM and he made some remarks which seemingly it could be just be the reality of what await some of William Samuel Ruto CSS. According to Martin Olo, he's saying that William Ruto has occupied almost all the space. To an extent, you cannot feel the presence of his CSS. And that is because some of them, or most of them, according to him, fail to understand their role. Ruto has delivered the promises he gave to regions, that is appointment. But then, the only problem he'll have in his cabinet is that the people he has are incompetent. They cannot work. And at the end of two years, he will end up firing these people. And then from there, he will find a reason for campaign in 2027. Listen to him. have uh, this definition of one government. Mm. But there was something you were saying, which the president was saying, that he must lead from the front. Uh, in two years' time, um, God willing, will come back here and he'll have fired half of his current government. Why? Why do you yeah. say so? Yeah, have fired. Because if you look at the total experience and professionalism in the entire cabinet, mm. uh, none of them, or if you put all those cabinet uh, secretaries together, uh, remove Juguna and Dumu and a few others. Mm. Why, why, why you move Juguna and Dumu? Uh, yeah, because he was the governor of Central Bank, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, uh, but, but you can be the minister for finance. No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm just saying if you remove a few people who have been around the public spaces. Okay. Uh, none of those fellows, all of them combined, can even equal half of what the president's public space has been. So in other words, the, the experience in that government is fairly insignificant yeah. compared to him. So he's actually going to lead from the front until he realizes that he can't do everything by himself and realizes carrying baggage and he fires them. And that's where we, we shall have the, the, the re-election campaign starting. But you know, I came in and I wanted to do this, but these guys that you guys gave me, you know, I had to deliver these promises. And when I, now I am the real people, and that's why we shall tell the real people. Do you really believe that he's aware of something? Because from the outside looking in, it would, be, it would seem so obvious that, like, okay, look, this is not going to work. Like you said, he's, not, he's, a, he's a very sharp fellow. He understands. Do you think this thing that you've just said, that he knows that uh, maybe some of these folks he cannot work with? No, he knows because you see, he had to deliver promises uh, to Meru, to Western, to Kohl. He had to deliver, so he has delivered. Mm -hmm. He has made that deal. Uh, the question is, and I want to take agriculture. So, if you look at his total uh, arsenal in agriculture, does the cabinet secretary and the entire team have what it takes to deliver on agriculture? Do they? 
Okay. Well, apart from the cabinet secretary, the others are experienced in that department. Who, are, who do you have there? The PS. Which one? The PS. The PS for life. Now we are continuing with this panel discussion, but just a quick request for those who are watching and you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. To our channel subscribers, thank you so much. And again, to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you and back to this discussion. Now, having listened to Martin Olo, the truth of the matter is that Ruto's cabinet input is fairly insignificant. That is the truth. But the reason is that he put some people who are incompetent in office. And we know some of them how they have been coming with the settlement. Look at Aisha Juma. She come with a contradicting statement. Someone like even Mithika Linturi, CS for Agriculture, together with Moses Kuria, they come up with the contradicting statements. So these people literally don't understand their role. And there is something the Nairobi Senator Edwin Sifuna said when they were vetting these CSs. And I want to quote him. Because according to Edwin Sifuna, he was clear that Ruto had competent people in Kenya Kwanzaa who could do the job, but instead he opted to go for people who are clueless to give them the job. The reason is that, according to Sifuna, he wanted these people to fail so that William Samuel Ruto himself will take the front role to be in charge of each and every ministry. He's a man who won't run his government by himself, without listening to anyone or taking advice from anyone. Na hiyo ndo ukweli wa mambo. Kama wewe unataka kufanya kazi mwenyewe, sasa ni lazima uchague wale watu ambao hawaelewi ile kazi. So that every time it is you who will be dictating what should happen in those specific ministries. Let me quote Edwin Sifuna without wasting time. Eh? This is what Edwin Sifuna said. There are good people in Kenya Kwanza, but just by the name he has proposed, it is clear William Ruto wants to run all the ministries because we know the competence of the people he nominated. The competence of people he nominated. Sorry for that. That was Edwin Sifuna. And this was during the vetting time. So you see, Sifuna was seeing very far what Ruto is intending to do. And this is coming happen. Sifuna was right. But Ruto then has also the second reason. Remember 2027 is coming. So according to Olo, two years from now, Ruto will be back to the electorate with another promise. And again, he's going with a blame shifting game. When he go back, he will say that the people I appointed to the ministries, failed me. So that's the second time he will be coming to campaign. And now already he has shifted the blame to the people whom he, he appointed, the CSS. That means he will not be taking the blame. Instead, he's shifting the blame to the CSS. So because of that, because he will have fired maybe a half of these people, he will say, now I have a clean team in the office, give me another term. And at the end of the day, I will end up doing the right job. So, he again want to lie to the electorate. He's a smart liar. Then the people will buy into the lies, as usual. Instead of understanding where Ruto is coming from, where he's heading. Actually, Ruto is a perennial liar. That's the truth of the matter. And in the morning uh, analysis we did here, it was clear you could see for those who even watch the interview, you could openly see that the president is lying on live interview. In as much as he was trying to defend himself, the issue of GMO and many other things, you could see it. So Ruto will come back in 2027 with the lies, but again with a, a blame shifting game. That is his game for 2027. So some of these people will be blamed for mistakes that will happen in their specific ministries. And that will be William Ruto's manifesto or agenda of 2027 campaign. So what do you expect from William Ruto? 
<laughs> Another question we are asking surely. When you appoint a new cabinet before they start their work, first of all, these people normally have an induction. These people normally, they are normally taken through on how they are going to run their ministries, the people they need to depend on when to take an action. Government school of what? Something like curriculum something. The induction happened. If not, why not? Come and work for new induction. If they were not trained on how to run their ministries, then why? Was it, was it intentional? And if they were trained, why are they failing? So, Ruto managed to fulfill the promises he gave to specific regions when it comes to issue of positions. So, Akina Alfred Mutua, they got their share. People like uh, Musalia Mdawadi, Wetangula from Western Region, they got their share. You go to those people who wanted to give positions in the uh, Rift Valley, you go to Mount Kenya region, they all got their shares. So to that extent, he has fulfilled. But then where he's failing is now when it comes to delivering to the Wanjiku, the common Mwanainchi. That is where the problem is. Because now he will lack people who can face him and tell him the truth. These people cannot tell the president the truth. It's few individuals who can tell the truth here. The rest, they will be waiting to act on the word or advice of the president. And if that is the position, then how and what to when how And at the end of the day, they will end up messing going forward. So possibility of William Ruto firing half of his cabinet is there. And they will have a new replacement. And that will be the beginning of creation of new lies to use in the next campaign going forward. What's your view on this? Let us meet in the comment section.